What is a champion? The miserable pile of pixels. Yo, get the hell out. This is my show. What the hell? What's up summoners? It's been a while now since my last video and I want to apologize to the lack of videos for the time being. It's just been quite a hassle these past couple of months as I have more information about that in my website because this video is about the top 10 season 5 jungle champions where I last time left off. So even technically the season 5 is now over I still want to complete the circle by first going into the jungle picks and lastly to the top lane picks as I still think these will be quite viable for the pre-season 6 as well. My name is Apodix and hope you enjoy the video. For my next trick, I'll make you disappear! <laughs> Shaco the Demon Jester is no doubt one of the old school assassin junglers who can ambush someone from stealth and burst them down in a matter of seconds. Shaco is known for his jungle success as you're able to clear up camps by primarily using Jack in the Box and 2 shift Poison. With Deceive, Shaco is able to blink similar distance to Flash, turn into stealth for the time being and his next basic attack will also guarantee the crit, so Deceive works as a brilliant gank or escape too. With Shaco's passive backstab, he will also deal 20% extra damage when striking an enemy from behind with basic attacks or 2 shift poison. This all combined with Shaco's ultimate, Hallucinate, that lets you first vanish for 0.5 seconds and then clone yourself makes him quite annoying to play against, but with heavy amounts of pink wards available, it might be difficult for Shaco to approach the enemy at times. The Untamed know no fear. Nidalee is a champion that has used to be seen in one of the main lanes, but because of the major jungle changes all around, she can now also jungle quite effectively. Even without providing any crowd control, Nidalee is able to clear the jungle camps quite nicely, because she can kite and swap between human and kugel forms, and therefore it's quite effective as she has up to 6 abilities, plus aspect of the kugel, that lets her transform back and forth. Nidalee can also gank well by initiating first with Javelin Toss, then swap to Cougar and jump in with Pounce, for some scary pressure combined with the other spells. With Bushwhack she can put traps around the map that can spot enemies from either roaming, or just simply spotting the enemy jungle to stop their ganking plans. Overall Nidalee can be very mechanical and weakish early on, but her amazing mobility, jungle and gank presences makes her still quite the best style huntress. Time has come. Ready or not! Kindred the Eternal Hunters is a quite unique marksman who is designed to be a jungler even though Kindred works quite alright as an AD carry as well. Kindred represents the twin essences of death, lamb and wolf which will aid in both offensive and defensive ways. Kindred's passive Mark of the Kindred lets the player mark one of the enemy champions, whilst Wolf does the same thing automatically to one of the enemy's jungle camps. When hunting these mod targets successfully, Kindred's basic attacks deals an additional 1.25% of the target's current health as bonus physical damage, and these stacks can be stacked infinitely, although you cannot mark the same champion twice in a row due to the cooldown restrictions. But what makes Kindred really viable as a jungler is because of the basic abilities Dance of Arrows and Wolf's Frenzy. Wolf's Frenzy summons Wolf that will attack inside the small area and passively when Kindred moves around and gains 100 stacks, the next basic attack will heal for quite a decent amount, so it's important to move between your auto attacks in order to gain the maximum sustain out of this passive. Dance of Arrows reminds me a bit of Callista's first ability, Pierce, where you are able to leap short distances after each time the ability has been used. Dance of Arrows, however, fires up the three homing arrows at nearby enemies that will help in the jungle and also the fact of having Wolf's Frenzy active or inside Wolf's territory, the Dance of Arrows cooldown is reduced to 2 seconds. Mounting Dread works better as a gank tool as you will slow a single target up to 70% and deal some extra damage on the side. Last but not least, Kindred's ultimate Lamb's Respite summons an immunity area around Kindred itself or an ally champion. Both ally and enemy champions who will be inside Lamb's Respite cannot die or fall below 10% health and after expiring it will heal all targets inside for up to 300 health at rank 3 for even neutral monsters such as Dragon. 
Overall, Kindred can be quite confusing to play at first sight, but after understanding the mechanics and using the ultimate wisely, the Eternal Hunters can bring some devastating presence to the rift. I can show them the way to divinity. Elise is a jungler who can be really devastating, similar to Nidalee, as Elise is able to transform into a spider and back into human form. Her jungle presence is good because of her spider form that also spawns the small spiderlings that will tank some of the damage to you, and with the 6 abilities in a total plus transforming, there are no real issues when it comes to taking those neutral creeps down. When ganking, Elise usually starts with human form by using first Cocoon to stun the enemy, then Volatile Spiderling and Neurotoxin for damage and then quickly swapping into spider form and using Venomous Bite and Skittering Frenzy to deal massive burst damage altogether. In some situations you can also initiate with spider form by using Rapple to get next to them but due to the fact that in human form you do more damage based on target's current health and in spider form based on target's missing health, so it's always preferable to start your rotation with human form first. All in all, Elise is a fearsome jungler, so you need to be careful when going head to head with the Spider Queen. I thought you'd never pick me. Amumu the Sad Mummy is another classic jungler whose trademark is to lock down champions by using Bandage Toss and Curse of the Sad Mummy. His jungling process is very straightforward, as Amumu's abilities, Despair and Tantrum, are Arian effect spells and don't have big mana costs, so he can spam them a lot and therefore clear the jungle camps quickly. However, it's the ganks and teamfights where Amumu really gets into the groove, as he will first go into a target by using Bandage Toss to stun a single target and then using Curse of the Sad Mummy to entangle the enemy and everyone else around him. Overall, Amumu is a good magic damage oriented tank to pick up, but he can't usually trade well alone if the enemy jungler picks you up for a one on one. Vita Piltover Enforcer is known for her punching capabilities, as she relies on her fists to dominate the battlefield. She fits the role of Bruiser very well, and therefore she can sustain in the jungle as well as have powerful ganking tools. When initiating, Vi can either start up with Vault Prager that lets her dash into a cursor location and knock enemies back, or a Salt Battery that lets Vi lock down one of the enemy champions, dash into them and knock up for some time. When you combine those two crowd control spells together, it's usually a guaranteed death within gank or teamfight situations and by far the main reason to be afraid of the punch lady. Do not deny your instincts, summoner. Udur the spirit walker has been provided with several goodies, so he comes out very natural when it comes to jungling. Instead of having ultimate at all, Udur has 4 stances as abilities, which have multiple usages and 5 ranks each. Passively, Udur gains attack speed when using an ability and his first stance, Tiger Stance, gives him also bonus attack speed and deals tons of physical damage to a single target. With Turtle Stance, Udur gains a shield and lifesteal boost to sustain extremely well, Bear Stance lets you move faster and stun upcoming enemies and with Phoenix Stance you deal AoE damage to clear jungle camps very quickly. All in all, Udur can be very unique experience to play as you either want to prioritize your gank potential by maxing Tiger Stance first or Phoenix Stance for heavy counter jungling and it comes up with a trial and error which stance you want to use in different situations to come. Rek'Sai, the Void Burrower, is a powerful and mobile predator who suits well to the jungle of Summoner's Rift. Clever use of her tunnels gives Rek'Sai phenomenal mobility through her jungle and within the enemy territory as well. Rek'Sai's jungling is very smooth as your abilities have no actual cost, but instead you generate fury that converts into health when borrowed. 
She can clear camps easily with the AoE damage from her first ability and also with Furious Bite when unborrowed. With Burrow, Rek'Sai goes into the ground and gains bonus movement speed while disabling her basic attacks but also granting a new set of abilities and Tremor Sense that lets her reveal moving units position through the fog of war instead of plain sight. When unborrowing, she deals physical damage and knocks up the enemies around her, so that mixed with the tunnel works well when you're about to gank one of the lanes. Rek'Sai's ultimate, Void Rust, gains her passively bonus attack speed and lets her burrow into one of her placed tunnels across the map with hyper speed, which all in total makes up quite an interesting and nice champion to play as. I will rule the Freljord. Sejuani the Winter's Wrath is the riding CC machine in the jungle who can sustain well thanks to her passive frost armor and with flail of the northern wind she clears those jungle camps easily. Her ganking potential is really scary as she can initiate with arctic assault to first knock the enemies up briefly, then slow them down with auto attacks and then permafrost to slow them even more and if that is not enough then how about a flying bola called glacial prison that flies a great distance, stuns and slows the enemy team and ruins the fight for them. Her strong source of magic damage makes Sejuani a great tank, especially to complement an attack damage oriented lineup, but just like with Amumu, she isn't the number one duelist in the jungle either. But before we take a look at the number one jungler, let's first look at some of the jungle honorable mentions. Fiddlesticks is a good jungler because of his versatility as you're able to sustain and clear the camps easily by using Drain and his teamfight presence can be really scary due to Crowstorm. Unfortunately though, Fiddlesticks can be heavily countered with wards and crowd control. Jarvan is one of the bruiser type of junglers who excels great physical damage output and crowd control. He is able to knock up multiple enemies with his Demacian standard plus Dragon Strike combo and with Cataclysm Jarvan can cage foes in, forcing the enemy usually dash or flash away. Kha'Zix can be somewhat squishy when it comes to jungle presence overall, but after some levels he becomes quite an assassin as you can execute their squishy targets in just a few seconds. Master Yi is a farming jungler early on, but after reaching level 6, he starts to develop into this DPS monster who can literally shut down anyone, but unfortunately Yi falls off short if he gets heavily crowd control. Nautilus is the ultra versatile champion who you can put literally in any lane or role, except AD carry, because of his insane crowd control and tankiness combined together. Nocturne is a jungler who functions well as a mobile fighter and ganker, as he's mostly recognized for his signature move Paranoia that lets him dash great distances towards a champion and also reduces their sight radius drastically. Nunu is a great tanky mage who can sustain good amounts of time in the jungle thanks to his passive visionary and first ability consume, and he is also quite a bully when it comes to ganks and counter jungling as well. Pantheon is somewhat similar to Nocturne due to the fact both champions are able to jump into the fight quickly. Pantheon however lacks more sustain but in terms of damage he can get super strong early on. Ramus is a tanky jungler who scales extremely well from armor and therefore is good against attack damage scaling champions. His ganking potential is superb thanks to his kit but like other tank junglers he's an extremely poor duelist. Kana is a durable and speedy bruiser who can clear the jungle quite easily and also excels at chasing targets and locking them down by using Impale. Oh 
Warwick's jungle strength comes from his incredible sustain sources, passive eternal thirst and first ability hungering strike. After level 6, his ganks become quite scary thanks to his suppression ultimate infinite duress and blood scent that reveals low health enemies nearby. Wukong is the monkey man who can be very successful in either one of the solo lanes, but his jungle presence is equally devastating as he can gank well due to the armor reduction from crush and blow, and later on the crowd control from cyclone makes him one nasty monkey. Xin Zhao is known for his strong early game and dominant presence overall. With his passive challenge, Xin Zhao is able to one-on-one -on -one champions quite nicely, plus his ganks are effective because of his damage and crowd control put together. Last but not least, Zack is a jungler who's known for his AoE damage, crowd control and self-healing skills that give him great sustain overall. Zack also doesn't have any costs on his spells, so he can use them whenever as long as the cooldowns are up. Force is meaningless without skill. Lee in the Blind Monk takes the throne of the jungle, even despite the fact he can't even see a damn thing. <laughs> His jungling capabilities are one of the best as his clearing speed and sustain are top notch. He's also an excellent duelist and with good jungler clear times he's a great counter jungler too. With sonic wave and resonating strike, Lee Sin can approach the enemy fast and with safeguard you can jump to a ward or to an ally providing the shield to you both. With tempest you deal magic damage around you, grant true sight and slow them when pressing the ability again to trigger cripple. Dragon's Rage lets you kick the enemy back and if other enemies will collide with the target they get knocked up and hurt as well. Overall Lee Sin is a fun to play jungler to pick up as once you get the hang of the energy system and the countless amounts of tricks you can do with him, he really becomes the strongest jungler for summoner's rift and season 5 in my opinion. <laughs> Okay, so that's all there is to the top 10 season 5 jungle champions, hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed, please hit thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. That's about it for this top 10, my name is Apodix and have a nice day.